Hello, good evening, and welcome back. Well, there might be some good news here, as the government is set to appoint a woke warden to find universities who cancel people due to their views as ministers defend British history and culture. But before we get into it, let's not forget that some of the scariest words in the English language are, I'm from the government, and I'm here to help. Because let's not forget that the reason this would be an issue in the first place is because of student loans. What I mean by that is that then you've got courses which are being subsidised which don't provide any value whatsoever and instead are the ones that run the subversive narratives. So that is why we have this problem in the first place. If it wasn't for student loans, as in taxpayer funded, not government funded because the government doesn't have any money, they just steal it from the rest of us, that if they weren't taking our money in the first place, then these courses wouldn't be profitable and wouldn't be able to exist. Or if they would, it would be in such a tiny level that they wouldn't uh, be able to create a big enough of a stir to create the problem that we see now. And bear in mind that this all started in universities and has just got worse as people come out of universities with that mindset, which is also why employers are turning away from degrees and going to hobbyists instead or maybe people with real-world experience through apprenticeships, because students who come out of universities tend to have been filled with a lot of unhelpful dogma, which is not going to help their employer whatsoever. And sure, the education might, but chances are that is no longer their priority, and instead it is just the leftist subversive culture, the, the dogma that is being enforced upon them, and therefore nobody wants to hire them understandably. But that understanding is not being pushed far enough down the chain. And what it ends up with is just some very um, vitriolic graduates who do not blame their professors for pumping them full of shit, but instead believe their professors because they've taken the preemptive attack on employers to try and suggest, oh no, no, it's not because we failed you as professors, but it is because your employers are racist or transphobic or sexist or misogynistic or some other buzzword. No evidence needed. Of course not. And if you are pressed for evidence, then you use subconscious bias. Why not? Just the, the catch-all. Because you embed this ideology so deep into the students' minds that you just need to then bring about that buzzword later on because they haven't heard any counterpoints to debunk those claims, that it becomes a part of their identity and it is too difficult to relinquish that after having that being a, a, a part of who they are. But with that in mind, seeing as the government doesn't wish to admit that it made a mistake and is going to step out, instead they wish to step in again as the governmental way to make up for any poor thought out policy is to provide yet another poor thought out policy. But let's give them the benefit of the doubt and see what they're doing. So the Education Secretary, Gavin Williamson, is said to unveil the Free Speech Champion. They will have the power to defend students and academics at college campuses. Institutions trying to cancel people due to their views will be penalised with fines. And ministers also told heritage groups not to use public funds for political purposes. What counts as a political purpose? Can't can't really say. When does a controversial view become hate speech? Again, you can't really see. Are there free speech laws or respects in the United Kingdom under British law? No, they're not. Does hate speech exist under British law? Yes. Were there 120,000 reported hate incidents from last year and not one of them a crime? Yes. Yes, there were. Is this all government run as it's the law? Yes, it is. So, what does this actually mean? Well, all I can say is institutions which try to cancel people due to their views will be penalised as part of the government's war on woke. Ministers have also told heritage groups public funds must never be used for political purposes as they try to defend the attempted rewriting of Britain's history. But let's not forget that the left like to say the individual is political, in which case everything's political. So... Everything is a political purpose. You can't escape it. 
and it comes after a December report claimed more than a third of universities are imposing severe restrictions on freedom of speech. Yes, because they've got their traffic lights of censorship. They're red, amber, and green. Whoa. <laughs> oh, they, they love their traffic lights, don't they? But it, it gets worse than that. As they say, in 35% of British universities, it wanted legislation to stop campus censorship, the study said in December. But moving on to more worrying um, statistics, if you will, that I believe they go on to say it's not just the 35% warranting legislation, but in other 70 institutions, 51% have seen some failures which should be examined by Watchdog, the Office for Students, and only 19, representing 14%, did not want external attention, said the report by think tank Civitas. So, that's 86%. And if it's enough to warrant an investigation, seeing how bad things have become in the first place and how difficult these investigations are, how difficult it is to warrant an investigation, I would strongly suggest that the case is pretty cut and dry. And, of course, it is the fault of the university, but it is also the fault of the lack of British freedom of speech laws to create this. And what about Speaker's Corner in Hyde Park? which is all about freedom of speech, because that, that is supposed to be the one bastion for freedom of speech. Except it's not. Of course, good old TR couldn't say his bit at the speaker's corner, which is exactly what it is meant for. So you can see the universities parroting what is being done under UK law, or then UK law is parroting the universities. Either way, if the universities are then following the law, well then... They're just going to be thanking their lucky stars that they're allowed to get away with it. So when you're trying to bring in this legislation and say, oh no, that's not okay, well then why are you singling out universities? Why don't you take this further and actually have it as a national law? It's food for thought, most certainly. They say that the main issue is transphobia. Because that's the hot button issue, essentially. And they say that although 72% have now implemented free speech policies, Civitas says they actually limit the protections for speakers and groups. Yes, no platforming and cancelling as the like. Because when they say freedom of speech, they mean, oh yeah, free, um, we want freedom of speech, but not for hate speech. So well, then that's not freedom of speech, but they don't quite understand that. Who decides what hate speech is? Well, whoever it is that wields the power at the time. So of course it is liable to change quite frequently. So, with all that in mind, what will this actually accomplish? Well, we don't know. Do the Conservatives have a good reputation for defending freedom of speech? Uh, no. Do they have a good reputation for understanding what freedom of speech is? No. Are there any other freedoms that we're lacking that could really do with being instituted? Yes. We all like the, the right for self-defence, for example. But... That's not warranted in the UK. So what will this actually accomplish? To me, in a very black-pilled way, what it will serve to accomplish is to say, oh, but we, we have provided freedom of speech, and that is just going to be enough to swing enough votes in order to regain some more power, while still being able to ostracise the people that we don't want. That, to me, for almost all of the politicians around... They do not understand the idea of universal morality. And that is what we're trying to push. Whether it be somebody at the bottom rung of the social hierarchy or the top, the laws should apply equally to all. Whether or not you agree with them in particular. Still, the laws should apply equally. And that's what's missing. And that is what made Britain great for so long, from so long ago. That whether you're a king or a serf, you're still equal under the law. That's the idea. That is the notion behind it. But I'm intrigued to hear what you guys have to say about this. Do you think we should just be grateful for what we can get? And hey, Gavin Williamson might just put one in the back of the net with this. And this would be fantastic because it's long overdue. And there doesn't seem to be any other way of sorting this because the government isn't going to admit they made a mistake and step out of student loans 
so this is all we can all we can get and at least we can get the ball rolling and then push for further freedoms once this has started actually use the slippery slope the other way and to our advantage or if you think yep this is a lot of talk without any action either way let me know down below always intrigued here we guys have to say and as always until next time have a good one